Caroline Dowd Higgins. Thank you for listening to Your Working Life, my podcast series featuring thought leaders in the career and personal growth arena. You spend a significant portion of your life at work, so my goal is to provide you with tools, inspiration, and resources so you can enjoy your career and love your life. And I am delighted to welcome my very special guest and colleague to the show today, Martin Yate. Martin, welcome back. Good to be with you, Karen. Gee, I'm a colleague now. I am you so are. impressed. You, you have Thank crossed you. the Rubicon. <laughs> <laughs> You are, my dear, and a friend, and I'm so thrilled to have you back on the show. And I, I want to tell our listening audience all about you. Martin Yates is a New York Times best-selling author of The Knock 'em Dead, The Ultimate Job Search Guide, now in its 29th annual edition. And Martin, I have to tell you, these are my favorite, favorite books. As a career coach, it is the first line of defense that I share with my clients. And you are just a cornerstone in this uh, in this arena of career development, and this book is a keystone of a 17-book career management series collectively published in some 63 foreign language editions. Extraordinary. Martin, you have covered every aspect of job search and career management in these books, and you have evolved in your career to new and unique approaches to career management. You've got cutting-edge contributions to job search and career management issues, and you've established a global reputation as a thought leader in the profession. So I thank you for being with me, and let's just dive in. What's uh, what's the job market like in 2016? Hey, Caroline, hang on just a second. I want to tell you thanks for the interview, and the check will be in the mail as promised. <laughs> Uh, but what what's happening with you? You know, oh, what I mean, I just say anyone can write a book, and I've written seventeen, well, so everyone have, knows I don't have a life. So, what's happening with you? You know, it is a little daunting to speak with such a prolific author as you, but I will tell you that I am happily in progress with my third book, single digits still, but however, very exciting. And this is called Thrive Where You Are. And you know, I am a career reinvention specialist, but this is all about reinventing in your own organization or your own career field, because I believe that you can thrive where you are if you look through a different career lens about how to rev up and repolish your brand and enjoy your career. This is, this is an incredibly important topic. You know, people, statistically, for some 35 years now, we've, as a nation, we've changed jobs about every 4.2 years, somewhere around there. But that doesn't mean to say we should change jobs. And in fact, the people who climb the farthest tend to stay with their employers longer. And we make a mistake um, in thinking, you know, I've been an accountant for five years and I want to be an accounting manager, so I better go and get a new job. We get hired based on our credentials, not our potential. So this book you're working on um, Caroline is is a magnificent idea of, of of how to get ahead in your career because you know whoever's listening in your department I'm going to tell you exactly what it looks like. There's an inner circle and there's an outer circle. Yes. In the inner pe circle, people make things done, and the out outer circle, people lean against the door and watch things getting done. When it comes to plum assignments, raises, and promotions, who do you think gets them? I know, I know. It's who Caroline's going to be talking about in that book. Exactly. Well, Martin, thanks. I so appreciate your support and enthusiasm, and I'm excited about this topic, and I will keep you posted as things progress. Please do. Please do. So, you know, brand new year, we're, we're just into 2016, and it's delightful to see that the job market is coming back, but things are changing. How should we adapt this new year? I think the first thing we have to do in the new year is recognize that, yes, the economy is coming back, and that's all good. We still have a lot of people who are, are underemployed, yeah. um, and, and this is in part due to uh, skill changes and the reinvention of it, not only just individual jobs, but entire industries, yeah. and, and everyone is in the throes of change in every business, especially in your business and my business, Carolyn. Mm -hmm. uh, Lord knows how we survive. Um, so... I have been talking for many years in my books uh, about 
pursuing parallel careers, while you give your best to make that core career professional job successful, you also treat it as on-the-job training for your own entrepreneurial endeavors. I've talked about this for a long time, but what I have found myself saying in the last year, and we now have enshrined in the Knock and Dead 2016, I am telling people not only do you need to do this, but by the time you get to 50, which, by the way, folks, that's when age and wage discrimination kicks in. Yeah, if you haven't yeah. already been suffering from sex and race discrimination along the way, right? Um, and, and there are no s solid statistics on this, but people in the my, my peers in the career management industry, uh, we tend to think people are experiencing somewhere between three and eight distinct careers in a lifetime. Now, this means that the only way to have financial security is to bring money in your own front door. Only way to do it. The odds are you're eight, seven, eight out of 10 people are going to be pushed out of the professional workforce by the time they're 60. So now I'm telling people, Caroline, not only do we have to revamp the way we look for jobs, the way we sell ourselves, the way we make ourselves successful on the jobs, by the time you're 50, you better have had a go at some entrepreneurial endeavors and you should have some idea in mind that if you lost your job, you'd be able to hang out your own shingle and go into business. And you know what? We all have to work towards that. I so agree with you. And it is fascinating to see the the rise of entrepreneurs. And many of them, many of them have the day job and they're flexing those entrepreneurial muscles on the side. You know, we, we hear the plan C professional route. So they maybe have a consulting gig on the side of their full-time job. And I think this is impacting the economy as well. Oh, it's, it's definitely it's changing the way we work. Um, my my wife has uh, raised uh, five children while she ran an eBay business. Yeah, she ran an eBay business for eleven years. Um, she's forcing me into a Plan B as well, Caroline. <laughs> How's that going, Martin? <laughs> you, you, you know I'm a recovering alcoholic. You know that, right? It's yes. not something high that I, and, and and once I got sober many years ago, I took another up up another little OCD occupation. I started to collect prohibition era cocktail shakers. Oh my goodness. Those those fourteen years in our history when you weren't allowed to drink, I got thousands of them. Wow, wow. So <laughs> and you I have been told that I either open an online antique shop this year or it's over. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll circle back with you as your accountability master in a few months to see how you're doing. <laughs> so, you know, we're both in agreement that the economy is uh, changing in, for, for job seekers. But do you think it's easier to find a good job now? Or is it just that we need to be more savvy when we're out there looking for new jobs? You know, the mistake people are still making which surprises me, Caroline, because it's so much easier to do a job search today. Most people go after jobs at a time, just like they did before the internet, right. which means can't stand working for this guy, do a resume, stick it on Monster, reply to some job postings, stick it on Career Builders, apply to some job postings, get a couple of interviews, get a job offer, accept it, jump out of the frying pan, quite possibly into the fire. Yeah. Now, it's, it's quite easy in this day and age, and I talk about it in the book, of, of you can, there are ways you can identify every single employer who could possibly hire you within commuting distance. Uh, you can approach them in three or four different ways, all within two or three weeks. And then when you start getting interviews, and if you follow my philosophy, which is, you go to every job interview, not to decide if you want the job, but to turn your weakest professional skill, turning job interviews into job offers. Mm -hmm. You treat this job interview just as on-the-job training for getting job offers. If you're doing what I'm saying, you're going to get a job offer. It may be a job you don't want and an offer you don't want, but it enables you to go to everyone else you've spoken to and say, hey, Carolyn, uh, this is Martin Yate. We were talking a couple of weeks ago about a job as producer of your radio show, and I, I really enjoyed our meeting. The reason I'm calling you, I hate to make the wrong decision, but I just have had a very serious offer from one of your direct competitors, Brilliant. and I wondered if there's any point in us speaking again in the next couple of days. There you go. Leverage those strengths. Leverage yeah. the competition what? in the market. Excellent. If if the customer knows one of their competitors want you, 
they want you to. And that's why, if you look in the front of the Knock and Dead book, you see all those people saying, I got two offers, I got three offers, I got four offers. It's not make believe, it's just by applying a particular set of tactics to implement and execute a job search. Well, and that's what I love about your books, Martin. They are so action step oriented. It is an absolute roadmap to success. And you are undoubtedly the king of resume building. So how does one begin to contemplate building a killer resume? Because it's different today than it was 10 years ago. Oh my gosh, it is so different. And it, it changes all the time. You know, we, we all love this set, the same first two lessons. Everyone listening today anyone who if these were the first two lessons you learned let me know i owe you 20 bucks and i've never had to pay a penny so i know what i'm talking about here first lesson we all learned was carolyn customer's always right don't you get it oh yes that's right the, sec the second lesson we all got uh, i got that and it was a it came with a clap on the back of the head and and the second one which with me came with another clap on the back of the head and was followed by martin so just find out what the customer wants and give it to them, okay? <laughs> and, and, and we all take these lessons with us through life until it comes to our resume. Right. And when it comes to our resume, it's, it's, it's now all me, 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 me. What I want starts with my name and address, and then it says objective. No one cares what you want. You know? Resumes today now go into these resume databases. I was with Jeff Taylor, the founder of Monster, in the late 90s with two of his henchmen for a weekend in New England. And on the second day, it was a rainy Sunday afternoon, and Jeff goes, stop, everyone, stop, listen, listen, I've got this great idea. Think of a fish tank. Only instead of fish, we're going to put resumes in it. And one day, we're going to have a million resumes in there, and we'll charge the headhunters to look. Well, today, Monster and about 20 other sites have over a quarter of a million resumes in their database. Oh. Amazing. So when we write a resume today, number one, it has to be written to be discoverable yeah. in a database of that size. Number two, it needs to pass the recruiter scan. Recruiters will spend somewhere between five seconds and maybe 60 seconds looking at your resume. Most of that time spent on the front page. If it doesn't jump out that you can do the job, forget it. You're not going to get interviews. And the third one, when it gets in the hands of the hiring manager, Carolyn has got to be able to read it like you're talking to her, not up to her, not down to her, but directly to her as one professional to another. Those are the three jobs the new resume has to do. You know, I love the simplicity of that, Martin, because you're right. Sometimes it's just a regurgitation of what you've done. And frankly, it doesn't matter. The question they need to answer is, what can you do for me? And me, meaning the company, the hiring manager, right? How can you add value? And if we can't answer that question, forget about it. Absolutely. It's, it, it, it's, it's such common sense when you break it down, isn't it? And, and I make things simple because I'm a bear of very little brain. I would disagree with you, my dear, but I do appreciate how you simplify things and synthesize them to action steps. So I thank you for that. <laughs> Martin, let's talk a little bit about social media sites because things have changed and now we see jobs advertised on Facebook and Twitter. Obviously, LinkedIn has been popular for many years, but what are your thoughts on social media sites and the job search? They're a great boon. Uh, they're an enormous boon to us. Um, I, I think the caveat we have to be aware of is there are people out there uh, who say, you don't need a resume anymore, you just need a social media profile, and I can do one for you for this much money. Mm -hmm. And that's all fine and dandy, but once you give them the money, you know what the first thing they ask for, Carolyn? What's that? Your resume. Yes! <laughs> and your resume is that document um, and more than the document, it's a time of introspection where you look at what you're doing today, where you've come from, and where you want to go. And based on that, we decide on the target job, get inside the employer's head by looking at a number of those target job descriptions, and then write a resume that is not so much what we've done that we think is important, but what we have done that relates to the employer's stated needs. And that changes the way the document is found it is read and uh, is internalized by the recruiters and the hiring managers. So, Martin, let's talk about how important those influential hiring managers are. How do we make contact with those decision makers in organizations? 
Okay, this is, this is where social media plays a great role. The person who's going to hire you has a job title one, two, three, or four, uh, one, two, or three levels above you. Mm-hmm. They hold that position now. If you're working 20 years from now, most of them are still going to be one, two, and three levels above you. So what you can with social media, join the, uh, LinkedIn is, is the most important. The other's becoming more important, but LinkedIn is still number one. Get a profile on LinkedIn that matches the messaging of your resume. Join the groups that are relevant to your profession because that's where the headhunters hang out, not the job hunting groups. Go for the professionally oriented groups. And once you're in a group, you want to look for people who work for companies in your target area. You can search for it. Just find a job posting on some job site. Go to LinkedIn, go to the groups, do searches of the whole database, find people who work at that company now who hold one of these high-value job titles. Join one of the groups they're in. Reach out and ask to connect with them just on the basis that you have a group in common. Once we have a name of someone, the LinkedIn profile will give us an email address. Yes, it that will. It, even, if it, even if we don't have that, if we have the name, We can call the company. They'll often give us the email address. If not, we just have to find one person at that company where we can find an email address because, you know, companies have what are called email protocols. Mm -hmm. And the if we can find Martin Yate at some company, his name will say be either Martin dot Yate, M dot Yate, Martin underscore, Martin Yate, one word. Once we find one name, we can find any name. Yeah. Yeah. I had a problem with LinkedIn. I found their vice president of customer service as a result of doing this. It works. <laughs> it does work. And thank you for giving everybody permission and, frankly, the charge to do this because I find so many people aren't utilizing LinkedIn for the robust contact information that it provides. So go beyond, be seen and heard, and engage with people one on one. Let me pick up on that. I, I know we've said this before in the past, but it bears repeating. You see a job posting and you respond to it. That's like going fishing and putting one hook in the water. You've got one chance of getting the fish. Yeah. Let me give you, let me quadruple your chances of getting the fish. Number two, look for the hiring managers by title and name and look for the email protocols, as we've just described and as I talk about in the book. Number three, and everyone tells me I'm crazy, but it really, really works. Print out your resume, do a nice cover letter, put it in a big flat envelope and send it to them. If you can afford the five bucks, send it priority mail, and I guarantee you it will be opened first thing. I agree. Sometimes simple is better. Absolutely. Contrarian thinking. Nobody gets mail anymore. That triples your, that's three hooks in the water, triples your chances of getting a job interview. Now what you do, just before nine o'clock, just after lunch starts and just after close of business, you call the hiring manager and you don't leave messages. They don't answer, you hang up, you do it again. Three times a day, you call on the res- resumes you send out and the other approaches. You will get directly in communication with a Carolyn Dowd Higgins and this is the point of your job search. Every job search should have a mantra every day, and that mantra is, today I'm going to get in touch as quickly and as often as I can with the job titles who can hire me. And by picking up the phone and calling someone, you bypass everything else, and you have quadrupled your chance of getting a job interview, which ipso facto quadruples your chance of getting a job offer. Brilliant. Go fishing with Martin Yate. Brilliant. Yes! Brilliant. <laughs> okay, my dear, let's segue just a tad because one of the things that I love in the Ultimate Job Search Guide of 2016 in your Knock 'em Dead series is you you talk about our multi-generational workforce and boomers, happily our baby boomers are are living longer, healthier lives and they're working longer. And this is this is wonderful. However, some are facing age and wage discrimination. So how do our beloved boomers tackle this? Well, if, if we bear in mind the advance we discussed earlier about entrepreneurial life, yeah. um, you are going to, it, the odds are, the odds are you're going to be pushed out. You might be a managing director. You might be a CFO. You might be a VP. Now, you can be a member of the Senate at 85 and 89 years old right. and own companies, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but you can't work for them. Right. Right. right? Uh, um, 
Bill Gates dropped out of college. Steve Jobs dropped out of college. You won't get a job at either of those companies without a college degree, right? <laughs> so there's a certain amount of idiocy involved here. However, you've got to face the facts. Once you get bumped out at a higher level, you're probably not going to get back in. There is a point where you have to face that. There are a lot of people now, you know, I have a resume writing in a coaching company. Men and women in their late 40s, mid to late 40s and early 50s, they're, they're making a change. They're still on the ladder. But increasingly, I wouldn't say a majority, but I'm saying a significant minority of the sharper people in these areas are saying, look, I don't want to go a step up. There's fewer people on there, just a big ass target on my back. I want to stay at this level uh, and I want to work at a company where I don't work seven days and seven nights a week. I'm happy to give them my life for five, but I'd like a weekend mm -hmm. you know, or I'd like a smaller company, uh, not to go up the ladder, but to, to have a life and to keep the technical skills sharp and current so that if you leave this job, you are marketable and desirable by other employers. So we're playing a long game, and instead of believing all you have to do is race to the top and get the corner office and everything's fine, which is rubbish, right? We're playing a longer and more sensible game, which is, you know, let's, let's go to a certain degree, and then let's keep this job longer, not go into senior management and maintain skills that can make us desirable to other employers and which we might also be able to employ for consulting, contracting, or opening our own business down the line. Excellent. Excellent advice. So, Martin, my dear. Did you like my Wicked Witch of the West? I did. That was quite, <laughs> that was quite lovely. Yes. But, I did that old Julia Child. I thought it was brilliant. Both, both were honored. So do tell us, how can we buy this fabulous new book, Knock 'em Dead, The Ultimate Job Search Guide, 2016 edition, and tell us how we can follow you online because you are an amazing resource that I want to direct my readers toward. Well, thank you, Carolyn. Um, you can you can get the book at Amazon and at BarnesandNoble.com, your local Barnes and Noble store, any bricks and mortar bookstores that are still around, except the ones that do channeling crystals. Um, you can get it on the uh, on the website. We have a blog on the website. I also do a, um, a a weekly blog for the Society of Human Resources Management, which yes. goes on their sites all over the world, uh, which. Uh, you know, those are the people who stand between you and the job you Yes, want. they do. Yes, they do. But it's wonderful that they have you as an expert. So I am thrilled. That's a great resource. And your website, Martin, do tell us your website link. Oh, knockemdead.com. Excellent. Knockemdead.com. Martin, what an absolute joy to have you on. I, I always enjoy our conversations. You are full of energy and life and great, great wisdom and expertise. Thank you, my dear. Thank you so much, and I'm only full of life because you gave me a break from writing, and now I'm going to go and poke my eyes with burnt sticks and be miserable. <laughs> well, <I laughs> Take care, Callie. Good luck with the new book. You too, my dear. Be well. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in to Your Working Life, where my goal is to help you design your career destiny so it doesn't happen by default. Career and life satisfaction is possible, and it's time to embrace what you love doing so you can do more of it. My show is now available on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean, and Stitcher. Leave a comment, as I always appreciate hearing from my listeners. I'm Caroline Dowd-Higgins. Take good care. <laughs>